Welcome back. Joining me now, Congressman Kwaisi and Fume, Democrat of Maryland. Congressman, thank you for joining us. First, the breaking news. The Senate Democrats' climate, health, care, and tax bill having just passed. Your reaction, what does it mean for your Baltimore district? Well, it's a tremendous piece of legislation. It is not Build Back Better. It's a smaller version of it. But in many respects, it's groundbreaking because for once we're able to say to working Americans, we're going to actually reduce the cost of prescription drugs. We give Medicare the ability now to negotiate prices on an open market that has never happened before. The cost of health care under the Obama plan, which was going to end the subsidies we're going to end next month, will now be extended well beyond that into 2025 at the very least. There is a $35 cap on insulin for diabetics, and you were right to point out earlier, unfortunately, that does not cover private insurers, but for the 3.5 million Americans who are on Medicare, their cost for insulin will be capped at $35. There is in this bill significant efforts to deal with the environment, the air that we breathe, the water that we breathe, and the way we are using and disposing of things. And I agree with you again, uh, at the very least, if what we breathe through the air is not a civil rights matter, I don't know what can be, particularly given the increasing amounts of cancer that we see all over our society as a result of carcinogens because of a carbon footprint that is way out of place in terms of where it should be. So that's gonna be reduced, I think, by about 40% by the end of this decade, as you pointed out. Uh, there are a number of things. Thankfully, I was really glad to hear the remarks of the EPA uh, director on the provisions and the things that they are undertaking. But this bill also does a number of couple of other things. It takes corporations who make over a billion dollars and for the first time puts on them a mandatory tax rate of 15 percent. If everyday people have to pay taxes, there's no reason why those corporations should not, which is probably why uh, the other side of the aisle fought it so very, yeah. very long. Um, so it's it's groundbreaking in many respects. Um, it's coming to the House. We're in session this coming week. We will get that bill to vote on and to finalize it and then to send it to the president's desk for signature. Congressman, let me go to another subject. You know I've been very vocal uh, from the beginning about the case of Brittany Griner. And uh, you've become one of uh, Brittany Griner's biggest advocates in Congress throughout her detention. And as of last week, conviction for cannabis possession in Russia earlier this year, uh, 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 Griner now is facing uh, nine years in prison. Now, both Russia and the U.S. have signaled openness to prisoner swap that would bring Griner home uh, as, as well as um, uh, probably Paul Whelan. Uh, again, we've been back and forth. I tried a clergy visit. You've taken strong stands. Are you optimistic about a swap that could lead to Britney's uh, release? Well, I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh, I would be remiss if I did not thank you for your public support of this. In the early days when it first broke, a lot of people weren't saying anything because the word was the less said, the, the better things are. But we realize that that's not true. The more said, the more opportunities there are to get Ms. Griner home. So I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh, and let me just explain why. Uh, Putin is a great chess player and he realizes this is an issue here in this country. And so instead of a one for one, uh, he's looking to find others that he can put into that deal, in my opinion, that will sweeten the deal and then cause about the cause the uh, swap to take place. Uh, Victor Bount is a merchant of death, as he's known. He's a gun uh, runner, has been arrested and locked up for some time. It's clear that Putin wants him back on Russian soil. Uh, Ms. Greiner, along with Paul Whelan, another American who's been locked up since 2020, are both in, as we know, detention. And so the question becomes, does it be, is it a one for one, a two for one, or two for two swap. And I think Putin would prefer a two for two swap. Uh, there's a lot of talk about a Russian who is in jail in Germany, right. uh, which has nothing to do with the US about adding it to the situation. So what we hear coming out of Putin's mouth and his foreign minister has to be taken with a grain of salt. It's primarily for domestic consumption in Russia. We know that there are back channels now that are open and have been open for over three and a half weeks where discussions are taking place. My assumption is 
that that it will culminate in the the release of Ms. Griner and perhaps even Mr. Whalen. But at this particular point in time, part of the problem I think the president faces is that people, for the most part, don't want prisoner swaps. Right. And we've had a situation where that's never been the case. But even foreign secretaries of this country have said over and over again, uh, foreign relations secretaries, that there comes a time when these things are necessary. And this is one of those times. I was listening to uh, Bill Richardson the other day, uh, who has for some time contributed in this area of foreign relations, who, by the way, is someone who does not favor these swaps has said even he realizes that now this is the time to do it. We've got to get Ms. Griner home, uh, and we've got to be very careful for people traveling abroad, particularly traveling in Russia, yeah. because my sense is that they're going to try to grab more Americans just like they're doing in Afghanistan and Venezuela and some of these other places. And, and, and it seems to me it's just uh, uh, so egregious to me that we don't even have athletics now above the global politics uh, because uh, Brittany Griner for seven years was uh, was working on a Russian basketball team when she was off season here in the United States and it won the hearts of a lot of Russian people. In fact, some of her teammates and former coach testified for her in Russian court. It seems some things we could not uh, bring down the global politics, but uh, it's, it's sad that that's the case. Let me go to another subject to you. What, what do you take from all the Trump-backed candidates that prevailed in Republican primaries last week? Uh, what party gets helped or hurt in November by this? Well, we're dealing with three parties now, the Democratic Party, the old Republican Party, and the Make America Great Again Party, which seems to have more and more influence and has really divided Republicans almost straight down the middle. Uh, Donald Trump endorsed 57 non-incumbents in this last uh, round of elections, 57. Uh, and in doing that, he came away with 33 winners and nine losers. So his uh, mark is at, at 78 percent. That's how effective he is and the MAGA people are. The problem, though, is that these were primary elections. And there's a bigger picture when you go into a general. You just can't a campaign from the far left or the far right. You've got to govern and campaign from the middle. That's probably where we're going to see a correction of that number. But having said that, 78 percent of Donald Trump's candidates being elected over the last couple of months is unbelievable in a country that really has seen Donald Trump for who he is and, quite frankly, has seen many Republicans for who they are. Unfortunately, we've got to work very, very hard out here in this upcoming general election, which is about 94, 93 days away. Otherwise, a low voter turnout will doom the Democratic Party. And Republicans are energized, particularly the MAGA Republicans. They sense victory. It's kind of like the Tea Party of, of a decade or so ago. So they're going to turn out in large numbers. The only way to thwart that is to stay right on the yeah. issues, pass the right kind of legislation, and turn out and vote. Let me ask you this lastly, Congressman, having headed uh, the NAACP, your national president uh, in your former career, now a member of Congress, with less than 100 days to go before midterm election, really, uh, if, uh, I want uh, to ask you this based on what you just said. Do you feel Democrats are doing enough to re-engage black voters who may have lost faith in the party and the Biden administration over the last two years? I think up to this point, uh, the answer may have been, we could have done more or Democrats could have done more or somebody else could have done more. At this particular point, what I'm seeing from around the country is an effort to not take this for granted and definitely not to take the larger black or Latino communities for granted. Uh, not that they were, but in these instances, people need you to communicate to them. This is what I'm doing for you. This is what I will do for you. This is what I have done for you. And this is why we are in this together. It's got to be a clear message that connects with people. Uh, and that's simply the way it is. Nobody's going to come out and vote uh, because me or someone else says do it. They have to believe they're voting for something or against something. And there's a lot to vote for, particularly when you look at Donald Trump looming as the next presidential candidate on the Republican side again. All right. Thank you, Congressman M. Fumi. Always glad to have you.